As the Roblox platform grew and evolved, developers have had more time and resources to refine their games and make them more fun and engaging to play, like what we see now today. And as well as making their games more fun, they also incorporated more ways to make players spend their money in Robux, so they could essentially earn more for themselves and for their business. A lot of games were paid to win at first actually, as a bunch of unique ranks and classes were locked behind paywalls. Now we have evolved to the era of loot boxes and gotcha. Now I'll get into gotcha more later down the line. I believe one of the games that sparked this era within the Roblox anime community was Naruto RPG, made by the Rail Brothers in 2015. Where in a customization, you had to spin for your powers, such as Keki Genkai, special abilities. The Rail Brothers have been making a lot of Roblox Naruto games and other anime games for years now, using this similar customization method. And that concept took off from there and was implemented in many other games, like what you see now today. Gacha is always a gamble between prizes. It taps into some sort of OCD within people, always wanting the better prize. I mean, you probably see some people flexing online, like on YouTube or Discord, that they got something on a certain pool. This right here monetizes the game, so no matter if the Roblox anime game is good or bad, you're always going to get it monetized and have players wanting to try it out due to that organic reach of viewers who you saw gamble. In my opinion, personally, I believe that if a game can provide a good free-to-play experience, the gacha mechanic would actually be excusable. It's like a huge passive income to some of these developers working on these games to help support them. People don't want a game with too much of a pay to win aspect and it really hurts a business if they make their whole content free. However, a lot of developers use that spin for power mechanic and put it inside their cash grab game. And a lot of people fall for it. There's tons of cash grab games that release every now and then that primarily get players to spend their money. Some may even overprice some values to rack in more cash. The reason developers incorporate this into their games is simply because it works. Mainly kids, but other audiences too, simply fall into the alignments of gambling to the point that it simply becomes a social norm in the gaming community. You have probably seen it too thousands and thousands of content creators spending thousands of money for robux not to get said value they're looking for but to wager that cash for a chance at getting said value they're looking for in a roblox experience which i and other viewers can admit it can be quite enticing finding it entertaining to watch actually however this practice may encourage some viewers to try it on their own as well. Overall, attributing to the problem at hand, gambling addiction. Let's say I have 50 Robux, and that hypothetically equated to 5 spins. So I take my chance with my 5 spins and roll for said value I'm looking for. However, I end up with terrible RNG. RNG Jesus decides to defy me, and I don't get said value. But let's say I really want said value, and so I end up spending more money for more Robux at a chance of getting said value. A chance. And that's how these games trap some people in an infinite loop and draining your wallet it keeps you playing more project slayers for example in the beginning of the game for your customization you have to spin for your clan they give you information on the side for the rarities of the clan so let's say your favorite anime is demon slayer and you want to have the same clan as the main character tanjiro kama though considering you're not exactly lucky by any chance you have to spin for a long time to get the kama clan full of insane buffs that give you an advantage in the game so it makes you really want to have said clan now you're filled with the urge to find a way to get the clan it's simply a roller coaster of emotions seeing your reaction when you finally pull that gamble or maybe not well how do we get to this point according to a lot of sources japan is where the story of gacha started and it's also where it's most popular at i mean you see a lot of games capitalizing on it and now we see developers in the roblox anime community using this as well games like all-star tower defense anime adventures these games all started the trend of gacha they're called gacha games every game has gacha elements within them Basically like a vending machine mechanic, similar to loot boxes. It entices players to keep spending their money for said item they want. Gotcha and gambling are almost identical. A lot of kids have been going behind their parents back and they're simply wasting their money. It's very easy to find hundreds of articles talking about those situations online. This is a big concern. And by saying this is a concern, I'm just simply pointing out red flags, possible hazards loopholes if a roblox anime game has no content whatsoever then you would probably think once or twice on whether or not you should probably spend the money on the game it's common sense i go play another game if that was the case someone watching this video is probably guilty of committing to this practice of gambling as well they will most likely finish
guys for watching this video. They continue doing the same practice. Now, I can't physically make everyone just stop this gambling addiction. However, I'm just here to inform my viewers on the matter. So next time when you see a game doing this, you can point this out. However, at the end of the day, it's all on you to decide whether or not you want to spend money on the game. Gamble if you want, I don't care. Your life is not affecting mine. Now, how do we solve this issue? Some games already solve the problem of the unfairness of gambling as well. Some games implement the segments, AFK Worlds, where you can essentially grind for rewards. Let's say I'm broke though. I still have a chance at the gamble, where I can sit in a server and claim my rewards for doing nothing. That will certainly please a lot of free-to-play players. So you can still have a chance at gambling for a set value. Also, there are gacha games, such as All-Star Tower Defense, that implement a pity mechanic within their systems, where it essentially guarantees a certain rarity after a certain matter of tries, just in case you have terrible luck. As I said earlier, this is how some games, especially some free-to-play games, make a majority of their money. Actually, from a business perspective, they're kind of smart. There are hundreds and thousands of games on Roblox. Out of those millions who play your game and visit them, someone is going to purchase that value they want. And that's just how it is. Someone's going to pay for the thing you put out. Depending on how good the game looks, because a lot of developers nowadays focus on graphics over actual gameplay. And so if it looks good, people are down. They want the pay to win access. And so I've seen a trend of Roblox anime game developers focusing on the graphics and gacha aspect of their games. And as you can see with games like Project Mugetsu, the developers capitalize on this so much. Games such as Genshin Impact is a great example of this. Oh, by the way, Genshin is cool, but I'm talking about the gacha aspect. People essentially want to try out the game first. Whether they like it or not is dependent on them. So essentially deciding whether or not they want to pay actual money in the game is entirely up to them. Project Slayers on one hand has decent graphics and is free to play. Once I open the game, I'm here with a cutscene. It looks cool. I go to customize my character. And then this is the big factor. Clan spins. It's how a bunch of anime MMOs on the platform make their money. You have a certain amount of spins and then below it, you can pay for how much spins you need. Going back to my discussion from before about wanting to get the clan you want and it constantly spinning for said clan. The income will increase exponentially, so it's really unvariable. You can't tell how much one person is going to spend in the game. One person could spend 1,000 on spins, the other could spend 50. You really can't tell. Sometimes gambling may be enticing, but it's just important to look out for these tricks. As some people may be caught in the loops I mentioned earlier, just be wary of how you spend your money. Some games may be a blatant cash grab. So please don't fall for these tricks. And if you're spending money for that spin, if you're spending money on any of these Roblox anime games, please be wary of these money techniques as well. I haven't gambled a tiny bit myself in the past on other gacha games, but I set a limit to how much I spend. I spend it sparingly and set a limit for yourself. Again, I don't care if you gamble. I just see some issues with it, especially with Roblox's audience being mainly kids. And just warning people about the addiction that comes with gambling and gotcha games, loot boxes. Also, we're not going to entirely blame these games for what they do. It's not entirely their fault if you spend money on the game. It's your decision. If you spend money on the game, you have to take accountability. Be wary of how you spend your Robux, especially if the game doesn't satisfy you enough. Anyways, thank you. Make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and peace.